Welcome back everybody to today's video. Today I'll be talking about the Lime Rock Park event I participated in in October 9th. After completing two gravel events along with a bike packing trip over the summer, the Lime Rock Park Epic was going to be my first event that I thought I was going to properly race. Until I didn't. Three weeks prior to the event, I unfortunately came down and tested positive for COVID. I had the Connecticut Grand Fondo on September 17th, which was the same day I tested positive. It took me about 10 days to recover from this. Uh, I was doing a lot of zone one riding after my recovery and slowly increased to uh, 30 minutes, then 45 minutes, then to an hour. Eventually, I progressed over to two hours of zone two riding and did some threshold workouts until the Lime Rock Park event came around the corner. The Lime Rock Park Epic event features three routes. The Epic route is 68 miles with over 5,000 feet of climbing. The Explorer route is about 53 miles with over 4,000 feet of climbing. And the Express route is about 18 miles. And it's perfect for those of you who want to see what a gravel event feels like. The Epic route features five time segments. Each segment is approximately one mile long with the exception of the last segment, which is a little over two miles. Most of the segments were relatively flat. There were two climbing segments and the second climbing segment was up North Kent Road, which was a grueling one mile climb that had 10.8% average grade. To top it off, the road was riddled with loose rocks, chunky rocks, some roots, and everything in between. My goal was to finish seven hours and average 210 watts for each segment. Over here, it's extremely mixed terrain. There are parts that is that pitches up. But just so you guys know, I'm only doing 180 watts here. So it is possible in this section, at least the first section. And uh, gearing, I have a 40 tooth and, oh, oh boy, that's well, let me concentrate. Ooh. Okay, leaves are making it slippery. And oh, slippery. Prior to the event, I mapped out my fueling strategy. I plan to drink one bottle of electrolyte mix and one power gel packet, which equates to 74 grams of carbohydrates per hour for two hours. In the third hour, I plan to drink one bottle of UltraGen, which has 60 grams of carbs, a bottle of electrolyte mix with caffeine, and eat one power gel packet. The last three hours, I would go back to a bottle of electrolyte mix and a gel per hour. The temperature of the day of the event was a cool autumn morning. I wore a long sleeve jersey with a base layer, a neck gaiter, a vest, and leg warmers. I thought that this was an ideal choice because the temperature will eventually rise as the day wears on and the sun will fully be out.
When I towed the start line, I met a woman named Sandy who watched my recon videos. Unfortunately, the route I reconned a couple months ago had completely changed, but I assured her that the new route was friendlier gravel and not as intense as and technical as the latter. We started the event at the Lime Rock racetrack. Um, I think so. You know, that Macedonia one, they were going off by Strava. I wasn't a big fan of that because there were, there were some segments that didn't come up on my, on my Wahoo. But, you know, I saw the signage. I was, uh, I had mixed feelings about it. <laughs> Remember they sent out the results and it was Yeah, it was like all like off. I'm like, uh I didn't have a good day. Yeah, well, my seat kept moving. I got oh, no. like The first oh, segment no. was five miles from the start, so it was a good warm-up before going hard. Unfortunately, this was the start of my poor performance on these segments. I was immediately dropped after a roll series of rolling hills, and by the time I knew it, the segment had started, a car behind me was trying to get by, and I forgot to hit the record button on my camera. I did get some footage towards the end of the segment when I was dropped before I hit the Wildcat Hollow climb. I kept looking behind me to see if anyone was around me, but I didn't see anyone. <clears throat> Even though I thought I was the last person, people were still passing me. And they were passing me with no effort as I struggled to catch my breath. It felt like I was doing threshold and moving nowhere. I descended down Twin Lakes and I was able to latch on to three people. I was at the back of the group, seriously considering my decisions, but currently I'm working on some negative thinking and how to get through that, so I kept myself composed. I met up with Sandy before the start of segment two and we were able to ride together for a bit. But unfortunately for me, I was not able to hold her wheel and was once again dropped. It's okay.
You okay? I know. I figured I'd try to shake this, but now I'm thinking of it again. I swear I got like whiplash in that thing. Oh, jeez. Half a more, half a mile left. Once we hit the paved roads, I wound up riding with the sweepers. Yes, I rode with the sweepers all the way to the first aid station. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh yeah, that's in March. March. Oh. Okay, that was, I heard of it, but I think that's the reason why I didn't do it, because it's March. Well, I used a little section of that earlier. Okay. Oh, cold and it's wet. That yeah. time. Yeah. Oh. This year was actually a nice day. Okay. But very cold and wet. Very cold. Here's that. After the first aid station, I panicked. Everything I had planned for my fueling strategy went out the window. Because I hardly drank the amount I had planned on drinking, I also couldn't decide whether to shed some layers to lose some of the excess weight because I realized I was carrying too much. 
Luckily, I was able to ride with a group. <laughs> but not long after I was dropped again. This will be a common theme throughout the ride and it didn't take me long to realize my weaknesses. This was also when I realized that if I were to finish this event, I would have to take drastic measures. There was a fork in the road and if I were to make a right turn, I would go into the epic route, which is the 68 mile route. And if I were to make a left turn, I would follow the explorer route, which is 53 miles. I decided at this point that the best decision was to do the explorer route, as I didn't want to be too far behind compared to the rest of the group. In hindsight, I think this is the best decision because after having COVID, it would be best if I just eased off on the intensity. I met up with another woman whom I met at the starting line with her friend. We talked for a little bit until they went off on their merry way. Did you guys do, um, by any chance this summer, the Macedonia gravel grinder? You did? Okay. Yeah. This is all pretty similar route. Yeah. I manned one of the red stops. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Pancake sale at the beginning. Oh. Make it better next year. <laughs> Why don't you decide it? Well, because they were looking for the kind of stuff. And it's, again, out in the community. He was going to make a donation. We tried to get one of our teams that's kind of down that way to help out, but everybody had so much out there. Yeah. Yeah, I think they changed the course, but to be honest, That's okay, I'm the worst climber. <laughs> I can I can descend okay. Yeah. Climbing is just I still gotta work on it. Well that's not really practice. Yeah. I wonder why they changed course. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it, well, the one that I reconned mm -hmm. was really hard. Uh, so maybe they made it easier? Yeah, there was a long six to seven mile descent. Oh, Ooh, snake. And be it was super bumpy. Oh. Yeah. I was yo-yoing back and forth behind this one man who pulled me most of the way until I eased back to make sure that I was eating and drinking uh, and then was able to swap out my gloves. Needless to say, there were a lot of lessons learned from this event. I wish I could say more about my performance, but it definitely didn't go as planned. 
I barely averaged my goal of 210 watts per segment, which was at this point, I think might've been a lofty goal. The next day I sat down to compare my numbers against others. And yes, I understand that comparing myself to others is not advisable, but I wanted to learn more about other women's power profiles compared to mine, just to see what my weaknesses were and what I should be working on. I realized that I definitely should be doing a lot more work on threshold and VO2 max. I have developed a training plan to focus on that. I also think that I should be doing more Zwift races, not every day, not every week, but definitely doing more Zwift races will help me to psychologically get through the tough moments during racing. I should also be spending more time in the endurance zones on my weekly or my weekend rides. Usually I ride with Jason and sometimes drafting behind someone does drop your power a little bit. And so lately I've been doing a lot of solo rides where I'm focusing on zone two riding. And last but not least, I do lack a lot of confidence. Now that we're getting close to the winter season, this is something that I'm going to be working on in my training confidence that I can accomplish these hard efforts, these workouts, uh, so that I'm a little bit more ready the next time I tow the, the start line. I hope you enjoyed this video. I intended to do a better recap, but I guess sometimes we just have those days. Thank you to those volunteers, the race organizers, the sweepers, and everyone else who participated in this event. This was such a great event with great food and great people. And also many thanks to those who came up to me and recognized me on my videos and saying hi. Until next time, everyone, don't forget to enjoy your rides. Bye.